Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 16th of January 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And the most important, the most interesting updates are coming from Solidar. If you take a look at the Western Sources map, you're gonna see that there are no changes in this area. Just a few icons of AK-47, that means that the Russians, according to the Western sources, made few attempts of offensive operation in direction of the town or the block, uh, Sol block, the part of uh, Solidar, and the railroad station Krasnopolovka. Now, when talking about the railroad station Sol, let's, let's uh, talk, let's assume that we are talking about entire town, but not just the part that located on the right on the, or on the left side of the railroad. Today, starting today, we're going to talk about this town, like uh, uh, about every single block and every single street in this small area. And when talking about the Russian sources map, today we got the first confirmation of the fact that the Russians managed to establish control over entire railroad station Sol, over entire small block on the northwest of Solidar. Uh, there was a video and photos published by the Russian PMC Wagner in the vicinity of this uh, small building they were standing with the flags so that means that they are there they were pretty safe pretty calm they were not they were pretty relaxed so that means that the ukrainians are very far from this area and this is the most important thing let's return back to the western sources map and let's update this map according to this photo according to this piece of information so as you can see the russians entered uh, this uh, railroad station sol they established control over this town uh, and furthermore, according to the Russian sources, they managed to get closer to the uh, salt mine number 7. Uh, by today, by the uh, 17th of January of local time, by 7 p.m., the Russians still haven't entered the salt mine number 7, but I believe that, that they are very close to complete this mission. Now let's return to this railroad station Sol, to this area. As you can see, the Russians managed to complete one of the most important goals of this winter comp campaign, and the Russians crossed the railroad. This railroad that split the entire front line in two parts, the left and the right side. And now the Russians are able to develop their bridgehead in this area and to complete uh, their movements in direction of Krasnopovlovka and Mikolaevka. Furthermore, I believe that now, because the fact that the Russians are here, the uh, uh, we can start counting days before Zdolovka falls and Visola falls as well. And uh, when talking about the winter goals, uh, the Russians managed to achieve, achieve all tactical or at least a lot of tactical goals during this period. Uh, they crossed the railroad and uh, they still need to do some actions to cross the river. And another thing that the Russians achieved by taking control, or control over entire Solidar, including the railroad station Sol, they managed to cut physically i believe cut the road t0513 this one that connects seversk and bakhmut furthermore the russians continue storming of krasnagora this town this small village and there are still very heavy clashes and to tell the truth it's very difficult to understand where is the real front line where there is combat line in this area but i believe that uh, tomorrow or even today in the evening later in the evening we are going to receive updates that this town have uh, will fall as well furthermore when talking about the russian sources map today in the morning we got uh, another important update from the ukrainian side is that uh, during the previous 24 hours the ukrainian forces published a lot of videos from bakhmut about the fact that some groups and battalions refused to continue the orders and they took a decision to leave their positions it's as usual situation in ukrainian army as soon as one of one or another battalion or uh, a company uh, refuses to uh, follow the orders we need to expect that in a day or in a two or maybe in some hours some part of front line is going to collapse if you remember the same situation was in Slidar when 128th battalion refused to follow the order and they were moved from the front line and uh, Right in a few days after the Russians managed to establish control over entire Solidar. The same situation on the south. Some groups uh, refused to follow the orders and then the Russians managed to take control over Azarianovka, Kurdumovka and so on. As you can see the front line collapses very slowly but the speed is increased, has been increased since the 
last weeks or something like this. Furthermore, as you can see, the Russian source map has been updated according to Opetna, now Opetna. Now the Russians entered the real Bakhmut. If you remember, um, a few days ago, the Russians uh, reported that they established uh, full control over this town and now the russians pushes from the south furthermore as you can see the russians updated these industrial and uh, area around on the south um, east from bakhmut also they moved their border closer to the town and uh, so the situation is not very good for the ukrainians uh, let's continue more uh, discuss more about solidar as you can see uh, now the forces in Siversk is in the very big trouble. The Russians activated their offensive operation in direction of Sporne and in direction of Bilogorovka. And the main thing that the Russians want to achieve by these attacks is just to pin down the Ukrainians and not to allow them being flexible, not to allow the Ukrainians to move the reserves from Siversk to stop the Russians in the area of Solidar. Uh, if the Ukrainians want to stop the Russians in Solidar, the only possible army they can use is the army from Siversk. From now on, the Ukrainians are not able to use their army from Bakhmut to stop the Russian movement uh, from uh, railroad station Sol to the north because they don't have s such a road, safe road to do this. Uh, and if the Ukrainians want to do this, they need to make a very big hook to do this. So this is not a very nice solution. So as we understand, Seversk group, Seversk army is the only army that the Ukrainians are able to use now to stop the Russians movement from Solidar in their direction, direction of Seversk. But from the other side, they can do this because the Russians started move, uh, pushing the Ukrainians in Bilogorovka and Sporne. They, the main goal of these attacks is not to take control over Bilogorno or over Sporne. The things that the Russians want to achieve is just to pin down the Ukrainians and to freeze the reserves and to force the Ukrainians to move their forces from Liman front line. And this is the most important thing that the, or the Russians want to force the Ukrainians to do. Uh, there are a lot of forces in the town, in the forest uh, on this um, on the south from Kriminai in this area. And during the previous 24 hours, there were very heavy clashes in this town. The Russians reported that uh, as a result of those heavy clashes, the Ukrainians lost around 90, uh, 75 soldiers and something around nine armored vehicles. And Liman front line, and it's maybe not even the first time in a row, is the place where the Ukrainians have the heaviest losses on this uh, on this special military operation. In when uh, in comparison with uh, when talking about uh, Kupin's front line, the Ukrainians just lost 30 soldiers and something around five armored vehicles. But furthermore, when talking about a uh, north part over Kupin's part, the Russians reported some Russian sources reported that they. Um, the Russians uh, have been activated in this area and these days the Russians try to establish control or uh, to make some movements in direction of uh, Stelmachovka and Mesozharovka and Andreevka. Uh, when talking about the Western Sources map, this map shows the wrong picture uh, because uh, there was a few updates and a few imp important updates that this part of, uh, of uh, the Kupinsk and Liman from la front line till uh, Novovodiana is under Russian control, even Plashanka is under Russian control. So this area that marked as a blue cloud is under Russian control. And now the Russians uh, started their movement in this area. They understand that they have some kind of penetration breakthrough in the south and now they need to start movement from the north. But before that, uh, I believe that the Russians want to short the front line by taking by establishing final control over Novoselovska and town like Stelimachovka, Mesozharovka, Andreevka and to establish some kind of temporary front line along the river Zheribets. And of course it will allow them to uh, release some forces and to move them on some other front line. Uh, and uh, don't forget that uh, when talking about the middle part and compare with the Russian sources map, there is a very big difference on the map as you can see the russians according to this map is very close to tarskoye and uh, zarechna right in front of uh, the russians have their position right in front of ukraine position the only area that ukrainians control is the forest on the south and to tell the truth this is a very big problem for the russians i don't even understand how the russians are planning to solve the issue with this forest mm, to tell the truth i can't imagine that the russians decided to start offensive operation through this forest because this area is completely mined by the ukrainians it is very difficult to uh, to undermine this area so um, somehow the russians need to solve and to get back 
to Yampol, but not through the forest. They need to get Tarskoya, Zarechne, Yampol, and try to encircle Seversk. And I believe that these days they are planning to do this. Furthermore, today we receive another confirmation of the fact and now the Ukrainian authorities confirmed this situation, military um, authorities, that the Russians are planning to attack from um, from uh, Belgorod in direction of Lugansk and Kharkiv area. So according to the uh, Western sources, the Russians are not planning to start greatest offensive operation from the south because these fields are completely mined. It will be, there are a lot of Ukrainians in this area, there are a lot of Russians. So it will be the same situation as Bakhmut, like uh, attack a wall, it's not a solution for the Russians. But when talking about uh, uh, Kharkov, uh, Liman area, the, that's the perfect area to start the Russian offensive operation and to return the territory that they were forced to leave in, in, during the autumn and furthermore. Uh, when talking about Slavyansk, when talking about Kramatorsk, about these towns, and we understand that the main goal of the Russians, at least at this phase of special military operation, to establish control over the entire Donetsk People Republic. And when talking about Donetsk People Republic, the Russians need to get, return Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, uh, like Druzhkovka. And the thing is that even if the entire front line from Sevres to Bakhmut collapses and let's say the Russians are able to establish control over Chesofiar and to get as close as possible to uh, to these towns like Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, Bakhmut, as you can see, uh, we see almost the same picture the Rus as the picture in Bakhmut and Sevres. The Russians will, uh, will get right to this wall. And it will be very difficult for the Russians to cross this area. They will have a lot of losses to attack this area in front. So if the Russians want to take control over Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, they need to do the same thing as they're doing right now in Bakhmut. They need to encircle this area. And there are just two ways how to encircle this area. The first one from the south, let's say uh, from this area to move like... Uh, in parallel with the forces in this blue cloud and in this reason they will be able to encircle from left and right these these towns this line Konstantinovka, Drushkovka, Kramatorsk, Lyansk uh, but for these purposes the Russians need to uh, complete or to clear and take control or return control over Taryetsk and New York agglomeration but the problem is that there is a very uh, um, heavy fortifications in this area that the Ukrainians built in 20 uh, were um, built in 2014 and i believe that they're still improving this area so it will take a lot of time a lot of losses a lot of casualties from the russians so this is not the reason of course uh, they might try to do this and maybe um, at this at some point of time when the ukrainian army will be reduced as much as possible the russians will be able to penetrate this area and to take control over new york agglomeration after that they will be able to start encirclement of donbas arc of donbas heart slavens kramator Drushkovka, and konstantinovka but Another way, another solution to encircle Slavyansk is to return back to Izum and to start the thing that they tried to do during the spring to take control over Barvenkova, uh, to cut the railroad between Slavyansk and Barvenkova and after that to start movement in direction of Kramatorsk from the west. Anyway, it, it is highly unlikely that the Russians are able to establish control over Slavyansk and Kramatorsk when attacking in front. Let's say from these fields, from this um, endless number of unnamed towns and villages to attack this, uh, this fortification. The only, as I understand, possible solution anyway to cut supply and support of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. And to do this, they need to take Barvenkova anyway. So anyway, the Russians need to get there. Another solution for the Russians, if the entire Ukrainian army is going to collapse at some point of clashes, at some point of war for Bakhmut, let's say, or, and Chasovyar, and they will be so damaged that so the Ukrainian will start running away for their lives or something like this. But I don't believe this. I believe that Ukrainians uh, will fight. We understand that uh, in the end of this uh, winter, in the beginning of the spring, the Ukrainians are going to receive a lot of heavy weapon, tanks, armored vehicles and so on. So they will have a um, weapon and they will have vehicles to fight. So they don't. there is no reason to step back. And this is the reason 
if the Russians want to follow this logic to, to liberate or take control over entire DPR, they need to encircle Slovensk Kramatorsk. So that's why they need to return back to Izum, they need to return back to Liman, to Svetogorsk, they need to get back to Barvenkova and to start everything from the very beginning. But if they want to do this, they need to start this right now. Why? Because uh, by spring, by spring, the Russians need to finish with the Ukrainian army that located on Kupiansk Liman front line. Because it will take time before the Russians are able to reduce and destroy this army. It's not one week or one day job. The Ukrainians, I believe, uh, during the past, past months and weeks were able to create uh, to turn this territory in some kind of fortification i'm not talking about the fortification of the same level of as slavensk but we need, anyway this is a powerful fortifications there are no bridges in this area all these bridges were destroyed during the first and the second phase of special military operation this is another reason why the russians need to hurry up because if there are no bridges that means that they will be very slow they will be very slow and I believe that the Russians need to get back to Izum somewhere by May. Somewhere by May, as they did during this first phase of special military operation. If you remember, the Russians uh, returned, um, got control over Izum somewhere in the April, in the beginning of the April, or somewhere in the middle. And after that, uh, they, uh, they during this the same time, they started their first regrouping from the north of Kiev. So uh, they'll try to do uh, this situation somewhere th at this time. Why is that? Because exactly in May, we're going to see that the ground become very nice for broad frontline attacks and the Russians will start everything from the beginning. Anyway, I believe it's highly unlikely to take control over Slavinsk and Kramatorsk. But maybe the Russians have any other plans, we'll see. When talking about Donetsk front line, one more time, the Ukrainians lost around 50 soldiers and something around 9 armored vehicles in this area. When talking about Donetsk, as you can see, Donetsk is under very heavy fire. If you remember, there was a very bad case in Zaporozhye, the Russians attack the Ukrainian energy and military facilities, that, but the Ukrainians use their air defense forces, and as a result of that, usage one of the rocket russian rocket was shut down by the ukraine air defense system and this rocket according to the russian sources fell on the building and a lot of people and there were a lot of casualties among civilians so this diversion of the russians and the ukrainians are saying that uh, that was like attack maybe by mistake of the russian rocket without any uh, without any usage of Ukrainian air defense. Anyway, some Western sources and some Western Ukrainian authorities confirms the version about the attack of Ukrainian air defense system against the Russian bomb and after that rocket and after that all that thing happened. But uh, anyway, as a result of those situations, the Ukrainians started shelling uh, and attacking Donetsk and today they attacked the middle and central part of this town. There was a lot of casualties among civilians, some buildings were destroyed, some people were also buried with the ruins of some buildings that were destroyed by those attacks and when talking about the south Donetsk area the Ukrainians lost uh, 30 soldiers and something around three armored vehicles furthermore the Russians continue their effective artillery duels and as a result of the previous uh, 24 hours the Russians destroyed uh, in Avdiivka in the area around Avdiivka one Grad and one uh, get sent B artillery system. Furthermore, they destroyed one D30 howitzer in the area of uh, South Donetsk front line. Uh, when talking about Zaporozhye, the Russians continue effective artillery duels and they destroyed Mstabe and Akatsi in the area of Arekhov and, uh, and Zaliznishna in these towns. So, as you can see, uh, the Russians continue effective artillery duels. When talking about the Kupin's front line, there were no updates about artillery duels. And we discussed this as well. Uh, the Ukrainians were forced to redeploy a lot of artillery brigades, a lot of artillery forces from Kupin's front line in direction of uh, Solidar and Konstantinovka. And uh, during the previous two weeks, so when talking about Kupin's Liman for front line, we were talking about the howitzers, old Soviet howitzers like D20 and D30. So uh, the Ukrainians are keeping some, keep some forces, some artillery forces in this area, but these forces is not enough to. Uh, to fight against the Russians and it's not enough to start any storm operation in direction of Crimea. So the situation for the Ukrainians are critical. Furthermore, when talking about the Western countries and when talking about the Western media, today we see a lot of discussions and uh, today we see some 
um, notes and some I don't know, discussion from the Western military authorities and they requested the Ukrainians to step back from Bakhmut. Uh, the, everybody understand and uh, believe me, everybody understand that the main thing for the Russians lies in Kramatorsk. But to take these towns, the Russians need to start moving from the north. And uh, the problem is that now maybe it's time for the Ukrainians to do their own regrouping as the Russians did in the past in Kherson and in on the Kharkiv area. Maybe the Ukrainians need to leave all these territories and get back to Izum and to Balaklia, saving so Izum on this line of railroad and so on. Maybe the Ukrainians need to step back from Seversk and Bakhmut right now to Slavinsk and Kramatorsk and they need a little bit time. Anyway, the Russians will have to spend a lot of time to cross these fields, to cross these fields, they will have to spend a lot of time. And it's better to spend, uh, to cross these uh, fields without losses from the Ukrainian side in close combat, as we see right now. What the Ukrainians are planning, to, what kind of decision the Ukrainians are planning to take, I'm not sure. But I believe that we will understand the real picture of the spring, uh, of the spring situation on the fronts that is going to be... be uh, only after 20th of January when there are going to be a meeting of the Western military authorities where they will decide what kind of help and support they will provide the Ukrainians during the next months. And this meeting will determine the Ukrainian decisions about retreating and stepping back from Bakhmut and from uh, Kharkiv area. To tell the truth, I don't know why the Ukrainians keep this area. I believe it was some kind of show to show the Western countries that they are able to do something, to get more help and so on. But I believe that now they need to step back. They need to step back. They need to go back um, on the Ukrainian side of Seversky Donetsk River. And uh, let's the Russians start everything from the beginning. Anyway, they will do this. But they need to save their army at this uh, stage of special operation. And that's it for today. Military summer channel reminds you can the many violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. Have a good day. Bye bye.